Now it's often said that the eyes are the window to the soul. But they can also make or break a portrait if there's no detail and they're not sharp. Now that can be for a whole host of reasons. It could be the lens, it could be the lighting, it could be whatever. But it doesn't have to spell disaster because here is a super fast technique where we can fake the look of texture, detail and sharpness and really bring life back into those eyes. Okay, so on screen you can see the final retouched image, but if I go to the other open tab, this is actually the out of camera image. And when I zoom in, you can see that although the eyes are in focus, they don't actually look sharp, and that's because they lack texture and detail. So in this technique, we're gonna fake the look of texture and detail, which in turn will fake the look of them being sharp. Very, very easy to do, and we'll do this eye here first of all. So I'm gonna come over to the layers panel, click to add a new blank layer, I'll then come to the toolbar and choose the elliptical marquee tool. I'll hold down my shift key at click and drag out a perfect circle and I can reposition that by holding down my space bar and then dragging around the image. And I'm going to put it around about there. Next thing we do is go to the edit menu, choose fill and from the contents drop down menu here we'll choose 50% grey and click OK. We keep that active selection present because now we go to the filter menu choose noise and add noise now this is a high resolution image so the amount i'm going to be using is 25 percent and we choose gaussian and monochromatic noise and then click ok now i still keep that active selection going around the outside for this next part where we go to the filter menu choose blur and then we're going to choose radial blur now if this is the first time you've used it by default you'll probably see that it's set to the blur method of spin we're going to change it to zoom and the amount I'm going to go for is around about 60, 65, something like that. We'll then click OK. Now, when I take a closer look, you can see what effect that has actually created with our noise. At this stage, we can get rid of the active selection. So we go to the Select menu and choose Deselect or the keyboard shortcut of Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and the letter D on your keyboard. Now we need to use a blend mode so that we can see the texture here and the eye. So we come over to the Layers panel, where it says Normal, we now open that menu up and just drag our cursor over each name of the blend mode. And as we do that, in real time, we can see how that's affecting that layer. So the one I'm going to choose to use here is one called Color Judge. I think that looks pretty good. Now, at the moment, we can see there's way too much of this texture and detail being added. We only need it on the eye, not on the eyelid. So what I'll now do is add a layer mask to this layer here. I'm going to get a brush with a black foreground color. Let's just check the hardness here. We don't want it completely soft. We don't want it completely hard. I'm gonna go for around about 20%. Making sure in the options bar, opacity is 100%, flow is 100. And then what we can do is just come in and just remove it off the eyelid by just brushing on there and off the center of the eye as well, the pupil just there. And I'm also gonna brush around the outside just to soften the edge just there. So take it all the way around there. So already we can see we've added some texture and detail into the eye. Now let's just rename this layer to keep everything organized. We'll call this eye one. Now if you want to do the other eye, which you more than likely will do, you can either repeat all those steps or just hold down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows, press J to jump a copy of that eye there onto a new layer. You can see it's duplicated the effect. We don't need to duplicate it. We'll just click down with our move tool and drag it over to the eye. The only problem is at the moment that the layer mask attached to it is gonna be slightly different on this eye to what it is on this eye. So what we can do here is just maybe click and drag that layer mask into the trash. We'll say delete, and then just add a new layer mask, get that brush with the black foreground color and just remove it off there as well. Paint it off the eye there, off the eyelid. We'll paint it off the center of the eye. And we'll also brush around the outside just to soften that down just a little bit. So at the moment we can see we've got texture and detail in the eye. We might want to increase that. And an easy way of doing that is to have both of these layers now into a group. So the upper layer highlighted, I'll hold down the shift key and click on the layer below. So they're both highlighted. Come to the fly out menu in the top right hand corner of the layers panel and choose new group from layers. And we'll call that eye detail. 
Then what I'm going to do is add a levels adjustment and making sure that this adjustment now only affects the layers in the group directly below, not the main picture, just the group directly below. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this little icon here called a clipping mask. When we do that, you see the actual adjustment here moves over to the right hand side and an arrow appears with like a, an angle to it saying, look, I'm only gonna affect this group below just here. And to increase the contrast, I'm gonna bring over the whites and bring over the black, something like that. There we go. Now you can obviously now come in if you wanted to adjust the opacity of this eye detail group. But now look, if I turn this off and on, off and on, we have definitely brought the eyes back to life. They look sharper, there's more detail and more texture. So there you go, I told you it was a fast one. Of course it doesn't replace getting it bang on in camera, but it sure is a good one to be able to fall back on just in case. But that's me done. If you've liked the video, if it's been useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button because that's a great free way that you can support this channel. But that's it. I'll see you in the next video.